MedCram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. Worldwide infections seem to be leveling off. And that also seems to be the case for the daily new cases in the United States. Recently, what's been big news has been the first documented coronavirus reinfection reported in Hong Kong, as reported by the New York Times. We don't have any peer-reviewed article yet talking about this situation, but it is forthcoming. And we will leave a link to the relevant articles in the description below. So this is what is reported to have happened. We have a 33-year-old male living in Hong Kong who was diagnosed with COVID-19 on 3-26-2020. The symptoms that he had were the symptoms that you would imagine. He had cough, fever, sore throat, and headache. He was hospitalized and later released on April the 14th after having not one, but two negative tests. Apparently, they also did RNA sequencing of this particular strain of COVID-19. The interesting thing about this infection was that he really did not have any antibodies. But a B and T cell assay wasn't done, so we don't know whether or not B cells and T cells were activated. They probably were, because as it turns out, the patient fully recovered. The patient, after this happened, went to Europe, and specifically, he went to Spain, and on the way back, had to go through the United Kingdom, and then finally came back to Hong Kong. He came back to Hong Kong on August 15. And it was at that time that he was checked as part of a screening protocol for COVID-19. And it was at this time that he was positive. But interestingly, the patient was completely asymptomatic. They also did RNA sequencing on this infection. And behold, it was a different version of SARS-CoV-2. In fact, when they compared these two, they were different by 24 nucleotides. And whereas after the first infection, the patient had no antibodies, after this infection, it was found that the patient made antibodies. Now, of course, there's been some commentary about the fact that the patient got it so soon after the first initial infection that the patient was able to get reinfected. But there's also been some discussion about the fact that the patient was asymptomatic. And is it perhaps because the patient had T and B cells that were activated and allowed those other portions of the immune system to take care of this secondary infection and make it less symptomatic. In fact, in this case, asymptomatic. Of course, at this point, it's mere speculation in the case of COVID-19. But according to a lot of immunologists, this is exactly how the immune system is supposed to work. After repeated exposures to a virus, the immune system begins to learn more and adapt and make infection less likely, but if infection occurs, less severe. And while there are exceptions to this, like, for instance, dengue fever, for the majority of infections, a second infection is going to give your immune system another look and therefore make it better prepared for subsequent infections. One also has to keep in mind that this is the first reported case in a total denominator of tens of millions of cases. What's interesting is literally days after that report came out, there was an additional two cases very similar to that, one in Belgium and the other one in the Netherlands. We don't know much about the one in the Netherlands because of patient privacy issues, but we do know in Belgium there was a 50-year-old female who did make some antibodies after the infection, and she developed another completely new coronavirus COVID-19 infection, but this time it was mild. Now, we don't have the detail from these two infections, but we do and will from the first infection because those details are going to be published in the Journal of Clinical Infectious Diseases. And we should have that manuscript out very shortly. So now if you stand back and look at this from a bird's eye level, not just from a geographic standpoint, but from a time standpoint, so looking back in time, has this happened before and would we expect this to happen? And the answer, of course, is yes. The indigenous peoples of America were devastated by some of the diseases that were brought from Europe. 
Europe, of course, have been a crossroads of trade and war. And so the populations of Europe have been exposed multiple times to multiple different communicable diseases. Their collective immune systems were well acquainted with these diseases. The natives of America, of course, hadn't seen any of these diseases. Not too dissimilar to what the world is today to this novel coronavirus. It is a novel coronavirus, after all. These are Aztec drawings from the 16th century showing smallpox. And here's an Aztec drawing depicting measles. Lest you have any doubt about how significant this can become, if we look at the population collapse in Mexico, for instance, where the population was estimated to be upwards to 21 to 22 million in the early 1500s. You can see here that these devastations of smallpox and other infectious diseases decimated the population. In fact, this phenomenon already has a name called the virgin soil epidemic, in which it states that the populations at risk have had no previous contact with the diseases that strike them, and are therefore immunologically almost defenseless. At the end of the War of the Worlds, it was the common cold virus that saved the world because it eliminated the aliens who had never seen the virus before. The humans, on the other hand, were able to repel it because they had seen it many, many times before. Now, as it turns out with COVID-19, we're not exactly defenseless. In fact, most of the people who get this disease actually do pretty well. That's not to understate that there are people that are dying of this disease, but it's certainly not like smallpox. And it seems as though, at least with the first three cases of reinfection with COVID-19, the chances of doing well are even better. And here are some responses from people who are in the know. This is Dr. Michael Minna. He says, it's very important to make some points clear. I and other immunologists have been saying for months, reinfection is likely But what it means is not what many people think it might mean. Uh, He goes on to say, immunity to viruses is not binary. It's not zero or 100%. We have immune memory. And like regular memory, immune memory must learn. Just as repetition is beneficial to learning or to building muscle memory, repetition helps build immune memory. He goes on to say, in the case of reinfections with COVID-19, or rather SARS-CoV-2 virus, it's likely that re-exposures will occur. The important thing is what happens upon re-exposure. Ideally, for most people who become infected, they will build immune memory. But like learning something just once, it may not fully stick. Once you get re-exposed, the virus might infect a bit, but your body will recognize it. It will recall it, that it's already seen it. As a result of that recall or secondary response, it will keep the virus from causing significant disease. At the same time, your immune memory is better solidifying its recognition of the virus, boosting immune memory so it can act even more quickly upon the next exposure. This is exactly the premise of a booster vaccine shot and why kids grow up and eventually stop getting sick all the time. They have to build memory through repeat exposures. Each repeat is a mild infection and each less bad than the previous and builds immune memory. And we're going to hear from Dr. Michael Minna as we're going to have another interview and sit down with him in the near future. So watch for that. Okay, thanks for joining us. And don't forget to see all of our MedCram videos at our website, medcram.com. We'll see you next time.